Hey guys, welcome back to another Switch Switcher One video. Today I'm here to talk about the Pajo Avanti. Now back when I was in Switzerland, I did a little spotting trip, and I managed to take a photo of one of these planes take off. I shared that on my Instagram, and a lot of people were asking, wait, what the hell is this? And so I think it's time to talk about this plane a bit more. Actually, it's not very well known, but at the same time, it's kind of known as well, but whatever. Now, yes, you should also follow me on Instagram, I have revealed my face there. Now, now yes, this is the Pajo Avanti. This one is quite a low-key, but popular private jet. Well, as you can tell, it's not a jet. It is actually a turboprop, but actually, it's just as fast as a jet. It's a very, very, very powerful turboprop. Now, this one features a very strange design, you can say. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. You can see we have a T-tail, which is probably the most normal part of this aircraft. Yeah, it's... It flies, right? And that's all what matters. Now, the Pajo Avanti is from the Italian aircraft manufacturer. Pajo, not the very most known aircraft manufacturer out there. This plane came out in 1990. It's a bit old, even though it did age just like fine wine. It still looks very, very futuristic, even though it's like 30 years old. Now, even though this was made by quite a low-key aircraft manufacturer, we have 236 of these flying around, which is really not bad. Now, yes, this is a private airplane. We, you can see we have around six seats, depending on the configuration, obviously. But yeah, I would say this is more of a smaller private aircraft. But yeah, let's just take off. Now, when we go full power, we notice the extreme power of these, oh my goodness, of these engines, actually. Actually, yeah, this plane is quick. Hell yeah. Oh, more right rudder, please. Yeah, this plane is... Oh my goodness, it is extremely quick. It is actually a bit quicker than a jet, isn't it? And that's basically the whole point of this plane. Now, if you are somewhat familiar with turboprops, you might know that they are a lot more fuel efficient than jet engines. But at the same time, turboprop airliners tend to be a lot slower. Here, that is not the case. You still have a very, very, very quick aircraft. Now, this plane is also pressurized, so we can fly high as well. Now, the joystick I'm using right now is probably broken. The rudder does not work properly. It kind of messes up the flight, but that is no problem for this one, right? Now, that is pretty much the reason why this plane is so successful. It is quick, it is fuel efficient, and also, it is quite cheap. You can buy it for 7 million. You can buy a brand new one for 7 million US dollars. Don't get me wrong, that's still a lot, but that is not much for such a quick private aircraft. You know, a Bombardier Challenger 300 jet that can carry just a few more passengers is around $10 million more than this one and costs a lot to operate. Oh, this one doesn't. Now, another strength of this aircraft is its safety. Actually, there has never been a Pajo Avanti crash. Well, there have been some, but none of these were fatal crashes. Yes, there has never been a fatal crash of a Pajo Avanti. Let's go ahead and land this one. I just kind of want to try how this plane feels to land. Safety sometimes is a big concern in the executive aviation or in the private aviation or general aviation. You know, private aircraft tend to be a bit more unsafe than, you know, normal airliners. But this one does not have that issue. This one is safe. Let's go ahead and approach this airport. Damn, it is actually, I kind of like this design. It looks pretty beautiful, doesn't it? I mean, it's a matter of taste, I think. But, you know, this one is nice. It flies pretty well, I would say. Yeah, but this one needs... It's a cockpit overhaul, but yeah. And now I need a landing overhaul. That was extremely bad. I think I kind of stalled out at the end. Whatever. We have reversers in this one too, which I probably shouldn't use because I broke the left engine. That is not good. Yeah, that can be a problem. Yeah, right? You really should not do a tail strike because if you do, then, oh, you can easily break the engines. I mean, that landing was extremely bad anyway. Actually, it was the worst one I have done in a while and I've done very bad ones and good ones, obviously. But I mean, the, the aircraft is, is fine, right? And we are fine. Now this, is, now, this here is an older version of the flight deck. I think there are even newer versions with thick screens with the G1000 panels. Yeah, the Avanti that we're flying right now is an older version of the Avanti. By the way, another thing, 
thing about this plane, its range is really good. You can easily fly from west coast to east coast in America. That is no problem with this one. So yeah, we can now definitely start to understand why this plane is so beloved and why this one was not a failure, definitely. That front part is moving. This is a very, very interesting design. It's very cool to see that this one actually flies, right? So yeah, we can definitely say that if you have around $8 million laying around in your bank account, this one is not really a bad purchase. Now let's see what happens to a turboprop in a bird strike. Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna be as bad as Oh, the yeah, jet engines are a lot more sensitive to bird strikes, but this one did not work out quite well, but all right, we have fire. Now, something else that I want to find out is what happens if you touch down without landing gear, if you do a landing, you know, if you do a belly landing, actually that happens quite a lot in private aviation. Do the engines hit ground or not? Maybe this is another chance to do a safer landing, right? Uh, you know, more of a smoother touchdown. Oh, oh yeah, the engines are still fine. The aircraft probably is not very happy with what has happened, but... And this was quite a smooth landing as well. So this is not a very good picture to represent this plane, but this is a really nice plane. It, I mean, it does not look like the ordinary other planes. You know, planes these days tend to look kind of the same. But you know, if I would win the lottery, I would I would probably buy this plane. No, I would actually go for a Cirrus SR-22, but that's a whole other story. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.